Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster here on this Thursday, uh, the second day of March, 2023. It is about 2.10 in the afternoon here, West Coast time in California. And the latest quake looks like a 2.0 uh, around the Mediterranean area. Seeing a little bit of uh, movement across this region today. Uh, the big story, 6.8 got downgraded to 6.5 around the Vanuatu area. Uh, we're still seeing a pretty large cluster of earthquake activity out here across the western pacific and adjacent plates here around the indonesia region so we we'll continue to watch that and see how it plays out uh, first going to jump into the weather situation right now out into the state of texas where we're underneath a tornado watch here in the red outline box that stretches across a good area of the dallas fort worth region longview and tyler texas included uh, in that uh, tornado watch box. We are getting uh, a couple tornado warnings. Uh, means that uh, the uh, tornado is expected or it's indicated by rotation on radar. A watch is basically just letting us know that favorable conditions exist uh, for tornado development. So we got a couple tornado warnings up here around Durant. That's well north of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, that system's moving off towards the uh, northeast. Uh, we also have a secondary tornado watch or tornado warning here near the Breckenridge area. Uh, and this is all probably going to be due to uh, rotation on the um, on the radar. Let me get rid of something here. It's hogging up my... There we go. Split the screen here. We can check out the uh, velocity levels. What we look for in tornado rotation is the differences here in color. That's indicating uh, one wind speed uh, as far as a direction going towards the radar, uh, the other color indicating uh, direction moving away from the radar. So a little bit of intermixing here of the winds that could indicate rotation with that cell near the Breckenridge area. Now the one up here near the uh, Durant area looks, uh, well, that's a little ways away from this radar, but I can still see a little bit of a um, rotation there with that cell. This is going to be a, a, actually a very dangerous day across this area. There's a lot of population density out here and um, a lot of moisture. We got this low pressure system. Let me show you guys here real quick. Uh, run over to the windy site. We got this low pressure system here spinning off uh, over around the New Mexico area, funneling in all that warmer, moist air, providing convection and stability, uplift, that is creating these storms uh, across Texas and Oklahoma today. Uh, the main area is just now starting to uh, fill in as noted here on the map. Uh, it is 2.13 Pacific time. So we're looking at 4.13 out there in Texas right now. Um, this is only gonna pop up further throughout the afternoon. So keep your eyes on the sky when it comes to the severe weather out here today it's happening right now. Uh, got a couple different cells popping up near the Winsboro area, Sulphur Springs. Uh, these are just now firing up, waiting for a little bit of initiation here in the storm department around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Right now, um, you know, even though these guys are underneath a tornado watch and they're within that category here of the uh, moderate severe weather threat, uh, we got to look at... Uh, what's coming behind it i think we're going to start seeing a couple cells fire up here soon ahead of this line that's developing uh, but it's all happening now and now is a good time to make sure you're keeping the uh, your weather radio on and local tv and news reports as the system advances a little bit further to the east towards the very populated area of dallas fort worth region i definitely know some folks out here um, outside of the ennis area and uh, I'm sure they're keeping an eye on the sky uh, as well. And it's, it's just southeast uh, of the Dallas-Fort Worth region. So again, this whole area, let me show you guys the Storm Prediction Center's latest update here, uh, current day one. There's the moderate category that uh, includes the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Arlington, uh, Garland, Texas region. Uh, looking at a high probability of seeing some damaging tornadoes out here today into this area of the state of texas uh, looks like these guys are underneath the hatched area significant severe tornado risk of seeing a ef2 to ef5 tornado within 25 mile of a point 
Uh, wind is going to be a big deal out there as well. Some straight line winds with gusts up to 65 knots or greater within 25 miles of a point. Uh, and hail. Hail is a big one. Last night, out south of uh, San Antonio, Texas, there was a supercell, a lone supercell, that was dropping a supposedly four-inch sized hail uh, south of San Antonio last night. That was pretty crazy. So a lot of moisture to work with. A lot of, uh, of instability kicking up here from that low pressure system. Current radar once again here. This is just from the Windy app showing quite a bit of lightning. That's going to be obvious here across the area. Dallas, Fort Worth and, and uh, the regions here are, you know, it's, it's coming. So just be prepared. Um, a lot of folks do have carports out there and, uh, you know, this hail can get rather large and it's a good idea to keep keep it uh, underneath there today if you can. And we'll continue to provide any updates uh, throughout the day today. Just be weather aware for sure. Keep that uh, weather radio on. All right, earthquake activity. Looking at the 6.8, downgraded to 6.5 by the USGS here. Earlier this morning, uh, we did see a little bit of adjustment up along this plate boundary as expected. The general plate movement here uh, works its way around this plate boundary and to the west, northwest here. And that's kind of exactly what we're seeing, uh, 6.5. Uh, and then uh, a little bit further north here, got a little swarm of earthquakes in the 4 and 5 department. Uh, but the latest one up here uh, around this subduction zone, this little trench here, uh, 5.0 coming in. So watch this area around the Santa Cruz Islands area and the Solomon, South, uh, Solomon Trench region for some further activity. It looks like that wants to kick up there today. Uh, over the last 24 hours, still seeing uh, quite a bit of movement across the uh, western side here of the Philippine plate and up here around the Japan area. See what we got up here. A lot of this here is from yesterday though, so I'm not really seeing too much activity uh, today. Check out the EMSC model here. Um, not seeing any newer rings across the area. Down into the uh, Philippines, south into the Indonesia area, yes. Uh, a couple smaller earthquakes. Also got a 4.5. Uh, let's see exactly where that's at. A um, bunch of borders there around the China, Laos, and Vietnam border area. 4.5 at 5 kilometers deep. And I don't know if the USGS is reporting that. doesn't look like it. So looking at uh, over here. Uh, another region to watch here is our Java Trench area northward. This region has been building quite a bit of strain. We did see some activity yesterday into the Sumatra, Indonesia region. Uh, 92 kilometer deep 5.0 here into the Java Trench. Uh, so we'll watch a couple of these areas here today, folks, for some further movement. Um, but right now, I think uh, uh, this, this little stretch right here is noteworthy to watch. New Zealand area, not showing anything here on the USGS map. And EMSC models uh, reporting looks like some smaller quake activity, I think. Yeah. I think some of that was from last night. Let me see what we got going on here at the GeoNet servers. And yeah, 3.1 South Island 10 hours ago, but all magnitudes map here. Uh, a couple smaller earthquakes, some twos and ones it looks like. 3.3, there's that deeper earthquake uh, just off the North Coast, North Island, New Zealand, 387 kilometers deep. Uh, these guys are showing a 5.0 along the Kermadec Trench four hours ago. 224 kilometers deep um i'm guessing it's going to be this one right here this 4.7 um at 514 kilometers deep these guys reporting it a little bit on the larger side but either way definitely uh, definitely um some deeper movement taking place there a little bit of inconsistencies on the depth 224 for that one but on the globe from the emsc 514 kilometers deep so uh definitely seeing a little bit of adjustment take place here now we haven't really seen uh, i'm trying to figure this out we've seen a lot of deeper movement here across the fiji area tonga region with a little bit of surface activity up here around the tonga trench uh, but we're lacking this activity here today uh, and over the last couple days because of the stress and the westward plate movement here. It tends to be building up 
uh, at its highest point over here around the Vanuatu area and probably the Solomon Islands area soon. Uh, but at the same time, with this quietness up north for the most part, aside from this deep quake here today, uh, New Zealand has yet to uh, catch up a little bit. I know we've had some activity out there uh, over the last month um, with that 5.7 and a couple other quakes and some fours up here, North Island. But uh, I still think that needs to be on watch here uh, for some further activity. The big island of Hawaii, most of this activity here uh, around the Pahala area, but we are getting a little bit of movement, deeper activity underneath the Mauna Loa area. Uh, there's a 2.1, 26 kilometers deep, also 2.29 kilometers deep. So kind of watching that, seeing how it uh, plays out. Up into the Alaska region, uh, looks a lot more uh, quieter today across the subduction zone level. Uh, up north, though, outside of Denali, a little cluster of earthquakes across the... Uh, oh, I'm not for sure how to pronounce that. Can't even see this other letter here. Um, I'll let you guys be the judge here. couple twos, uh, but also a 4.3 in there. So these could all be uh, aftershocks taking place from this uh, earthquake that struck late last night. Uh, there's some fault systems that obviously run through here. Not all listed on the map, but uh, definitely some activity kicking up there today in the Alaska region. All right, West Coast activity, Northern Cal. Aside from the Clear Lake volcanic field there and the hydrothermal operations, things fairly calm. And it's been that way here for a couple days. Southern California as well. Not a whole lot of movement. All the activity here scooting off to the west. Uh, once we get to the point of uh, uh, buildup and uh, strain, as um, far as, we, you know, far as the, uh, the westward plate movement here, we should see that switch back over uh, to this region. It's kind of like a teeter-totter effect here with this pressure out here along the west and then pressure shifting over here to the east it uh is definitely kicking off here to the west right now so california should remain fairly quiet uh, until we see that switch back over uh texas area a couple small earthquakes this morning most of the most of those from last night and the rest of the country there looks fairly quiet some movement there into mexico yesterday with that 5.7 since then, we've seen a little bit of further earthquake activity, 4.3 and 4.6. Notice the adjustment upstream from the deeper activity yesterday. Uh, deeper one was 87 kilometers deep. Uh, these two sitting at 32 and 28. So a little bit of uh, adjustment along the Middle America Trench. South America looks pretty darn quiet. We only got one earthquake here, 3.9 being reported by the USGS. And uh, let's see what we got here for the uh, EMSC model. Some smaller quakes, it looks like, mostly threes. But overall, seismic activity, uh, somewhat calm there for now. Did we just have an earthquake come in here? Three point. Let me see what we got here. Is there a three buried underneath there? Um, well, yeah, there it is. 3.6. 3.4, 3.6. Those coming in here just a few minutes ago. Let me bring up the 2.5 and above map so I can see a little bit. Yeah, 3.4, 3.6. Coming in just after 1 o'clock here, about an hour or so ago, my time. Um, within the area of Cobb Mountain, which of course is around the hydrothermal plants. Satellite view here shows it literally within feet of one of these hydrothermal operations. So things are definitely cooking out there so to speak in the uh, clear lake volcanic field if you get a second check it out it's calpine hydrothermal operations there around the clear lake volcanic field they got a rather interesting process there of creating energy goodness all right uh let's see what else do we have here south sandwich trench from yesterday uh seen that 5.2 not really uh seen anything else there today see what else we have here it's just a lot of movement here over the last 24 hours uh, i'll continue to keep a couple of these regions in mind uh let's go check out space weather here i know we had an m flare that just popped off i believe uh there it is just recovering from that a little bit a small you know, moderate i guess it, yeah m 3.8 not a big one a very short duration m flare 
And uh, let's see. That came off of 3234. The far side sunspot here on the northwestern edge of the sun. Not going to be geo effective in terms of uh, any CME that may have been produced, but it doesn't even look like it did produce a CME. Uh, coronal hole 81 and 82 is now in position of the Earth facing side of the sun directly lined up with us it takes a little while for that those charged particles to get here uh, but i think we could see a little bit of a enhancement to the three-day uh, geomagnetic forecast probably around the fourth time period and maybe on the fifth we'll see how that plays out uh, but that could enhance the uh, auroras a little bit um let's see what these guys are saying here yeah they're talking about the uh, coronal hole feature as well there is a uh, solar filament currently located in the southeast quadrant. That's going to be this picture right here. That's a pretty nice one. Sometimes these things blast off the surface here. Oh, not, not the surface, but the... Uh, I don't know what to call it. I'm having a, having, a, having a moment. But uh, sometimes these things blast off, shooting off charged particles as well. Uh, we'll watch that as it rotates in the view, but... Uh, Let's see what we got for solar flare threat. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, still shows 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 50. 10% chance for an X flare. And let's look at these magnetic structures here real quick. There's the one that just produced the M flare. Kind of scooting off. And this one does not look all that promising at all. None of these do that are facing the Earth. And more better look up here on the northeastern side of the sun northeastern limb uh this one here just looks a little disorganized it's fairly massive but i don't see any complex structure uh not really much with that one either potentially over here this newer sunspot um that's going to be nicely lined up with earth as uh, far as the position on the sun goes once it reaches over here uh, hopefully it will continue to develop. It does look uh, somewhat promising now. We'll continue to watch that area uh, for some flaring. All right, uh, just real quick double check here of the weather. It looks like the tornado warning here outside of the Breckenridge area has been downgraded to just a severe thunderstorm warning. The tornado watch, of course, still continues here for the next five, six hours across a good portion of Texas. Stretching up into Oklahoma as well. And uh, remember, you don't really have to necessarily be in that torna tornado watch box uh, to experience a tornado out here. Uh, all areas specifically around this region are primed for um, severe weather today. So just keep your eyes and ears open and the weather radio on all day today. Uh, this one looks pretty nice with its... Uh, see what we got here looks like it's dropping some good sized hail uh, within this area notice the purple features uh, that is severe warned and uh, moving off to the east northeast at 41 knots it looks like so watch that hailer uh, not for sure the exact size of the hail um, this one up north here has hail size 1.5. But uh, could get very interesting here, folks. Stay safe and uh, you know just make sure you have your uh, your cards in order if uh, you got to get somewhere real quick, you know, as far as your storm shelter goes and whatnot. So just stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys a little bit later on tonight. And, um, yeah, have a great Thursday, everyone. Take care.